So hello and welcome to MIPIM 2020's webinar on sustainability and return on investment for hotel developments. Uh, I'd like to thank Reed Midham for the opportunity to discuss this important topic. My name is Adam McLennan. I'm a managing director at PKF Hotel Experts. We are international hotel consultants who focus on market feasibility studies, valuations, investment due diligence, operator search, project development consulting and asset management for hotel owners, operators, and investors. Sustainability is a topic that I'm passionate about as a global citizen, but also pragmatic enough to realize that in a capitalist world, we must find sustainable solutions, which also keep the wheels turning. It's very unfortunate to be speaking about hotels from my living room in London, when most hotels around the world are closed or running at low occupancy. But I'm sure that we will meet up again in due course in Cannes, in hopefully in 2021, and that the industry will in due course pick itself up from the current crisis, as we have done from previous ones. The hotel and travel industries have had an extended period of growth in Europe and internationally, alongside an expansion in global economic output, a reduction in poverty, and the liberalization of air travel. What was once a luxury available mostly to the wealthy and to business people is now increasingly accessible to the masses from all continents who have been traveling and staying in hotels in ever increasing numbers. Between 2009 and 2018, the total number of air passengers carried per year increased from 2.25 to 4.23 billion, which is a lot of flights, a lot of hotel stays, and a sizable contribution to the climate crisis. The panel consists of two hotel investors, Rosa Brand, Principal Real Estate from KKR, and Frank Hildwine, Head of Hotel Acquisitions and Sales at DECA Immobilien. We have a hotel operator, Josh Littman, VP of Development for Europe for SH Hotels and Resorts, and a sustainability consultant, Zenia Zuhohenlohe, Managing Partner of Considerate Group. We will discuss why and how the industry is changing as a response to climate change and debate whether making sustainable decisions will actually improve the ROI of a hotel investment. We have just under 40 minutes and a lot to get through, so I'll start by asking the panelists to introduce themselves and their companies before we get into some questions. Perhaps, uh, Xenia, you can, you can kick us off. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Um, yes, so um, we are, as Adam just said, we are a sustainability consultancy with a specific um, view to the hospitality sector. Um, consider it's been around for a long time. It's been turned into a limited company in 2012, <clears throat> and we serve destinations internationally, hotel groups, um, individual properties, um, and different hospitality sectors. We do this through a myriad of solutions. A lot of it is strategic advice, developing strategies with a long-term view um, that sit beside the business strategy. Uh, we do a lot of reporting. We try and sit within the global goals of climate change, the UN Global Compact goals, the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we also do carbon reporting. We work a lot with technology and innovation because sustainability sits aside, my mind, very much also with the digital transformation. So we need data. Without data, we can't advance. We don't have the data. We can't show progress. So we do have a couple of technologies we've developed. One is an online platform to collect uh, environmental data. And another one is an app that we're launching this year. So that's us in a nutshell. I will pass over to the next panelist. Thank you, Adam. Let's go to uh, Josh. Good morning. Thanks for having me on the panel. Um, I'm Josh Libman. I work with uh, SH Hotels and Resorts. We were founded by Barry Sternlicht, who's still our chairman and CEO. Um, we have three core brands and a collection brand with Baccarat Hotels and Resorts. It's ultra luxury of one hotel, um, which is our nature inspired um, luxury lifestyle brand. And we have Treehouse Hotels, which is a um, sort of a little sibling, um, more playful offshoot of, of One Hotels, and our collection is SH Collection. Um, you, you know, the hotel industry was, um, has always traditionally been a very wasteful industry, and so the decision was made um, to create a platform um, that was centered on sustainability first, um, at rather, rather than building up a product, 
um, and wrap around sustainability out of it. So, so for us, One Hotels, which, which as I mentioned, is our nature-based, uh, nature-inspired um, platform, was really, was really created around the vision and values of sustainability. Um, and I'm sure we'll get a little bit more into that going forward. Thank you, Josh. Rosa. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I'm Rosa Brand. I sit on KKR's uh, real estate investment team. Uh, KKR is a global investment firm traditionally quite focused on private equity, but uh, over the past couple of decades, very actively involved in all kinds of sectors, including real estate. And my team covers all of Western Europe and actually covers all real estate sectors. So hospitality is only a part of what we do, although I would say it's an important part as well. It's been very high up on the agenda. We definitely are strong believers still, despite COVID, uh, that people want to buy experiences uh, more than things. And that trend we expect to be increasing uh, over time, despite everything and all the negative news that are uh, coming out um, at the moment. Uh, ESG is also a topic that's very high on the agenda uh, for us across all of our investments uh, and that only continues to become a stronger and stronger trend. So very happy to be discussing with all of you today. Thank you, Rosa. Frank, last but not least. Yeah, hello, Frank, Frank Hildline. I'm, I'm running hotel acquisitions for, for the DECA group. DECA is the fund manager for the German savings banks covering basically all asset classes. I'm with the real estate team and we are managing about 45 billion of real estate, including about 70 hotels. So four and a half billion in hotels. Um, we are investing we are investing globally and um, we are about growing our portfolio by two billion per year roughly so sustainability has been has been always on the agenda but uh, I would say we have been focused more on on returns than on sustainability but there is a stronger demand from our investors for retail and also in institutional investors to buy institutional products which are sustainable. So, so the, the German Fund Association, BVI, they, they are out with a new regulation tool covering ESG and basically all funds within the German uh, regulated fund industry will be, will be rated uh, sooner or later. And we want to start by uh, Q2 2021 with uh, several ratings. And um, I'm happy to hear what others are planned here and uh, happy to discuss ESG with the panel today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Now, I think just to, to, to start off, there's a, there's a few different sort of topics that we can cover. And I think one of them is obviously uh, demand. You know, are, are, do people care enough about sustainability uh, to spend more money in your hotels, to, to, to from a from a from a customer from a guest perspective, do they care about it? And and but perhaps before we we kick off with that, we should um we should learn a little bit about some of the facts that that go into it. Why is this an important topic, and, and what are some of the governments around Europe doing um to 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 sort of move the needle on sustainability? And, and for that, I'm very very uh, happy that we have Zenia here because she keeps her fingers very firmly on the pulse of, of what, what, what is happening in Europe and, and uh, with governments um, and in, on the planet in terms of you know, what the scale of the problem actually is. So perhaps you could give us just a, a few minutes on, on that. Yeah, thank you, Adam. And, and I think the one thing that we need to, a, a myth that we need to bust, I think, right from the beginning is that sustainability costs more. It doesn't. If you're running a hotel efficiently, and you're reducing your resource consumptions efficiently, which ultimately reduces your CO2 emissions, um, you can save a lot of money. So that's you know, a very important aspect that we need to keep stressing. So like, for example, I'll give you some facts then. Um, energy, for example, buildings contribute approximately 8% of global um, greenhouse gas emissions, which is more or less what the tourism sector as a whole has been assigned as CO2 emissions as well. Out of that, when you take it out of the tourism sector, it's actually only 4% is the airlines and then another 4% is hotel and supply chain. So, you know, often they talk about airline, air travel being so CO2 um, intense. It's not great, but there are other industries out there that are much, much, much worse. Now, let's not take the pressure off us. So energy 
um, 8% of buildings. In the UK, for example, we've got hospitality industry's total energy consumption uh, costs 400 million pounds. All right. That's as much as running four coal fired power, coal fired power plants for a year. So there's a lot of money that you can reduce and smart buildings can imply a 60% reduction. All right. So we've got the EU green deal that's been signed off. That's very much linked to the recovery fund now. Um, and as Frank was just saying, you know, in Germany, there's going to be a lot more cu coming up on ESG and regulation. So the, again, the economic opportunities are huge. A, you can save money. B, there's a lot of money out there being put into uh, smarting up your building at the moment. So the opportunities for, you know, getting great um, funding on that front are very good at the moment. Then let's go over, for example, also to waste. Um, the, the hospitality sector is responsible for a lot of waste. Um, in Europe alone, 12% of the total waste comes from the hospitality sector. And that includes in the UK, for example, we have 289,000 tons of waste, um, which includes 79,000 tons of food waste. Again, that's cost, that's money being thrown away. All right. So if we look at how we deal with our waste, we can save a lot of money. So I think we need to keep thinking again. It doesn't always it actually costs us more not to look at these things. For example, the climate risk of the of the hospitality and tourism sector over the last 20 years alone. That's according to the uh, WTTC. There was three trillion US dollars of direct losses stemming from, from environmental crisis, okay, affecting the hospitality sector. So again, I really think we need to look at what have we lost? What are the risks that we're running? What are the financial risks? And, and Mark Carney very um, cunningly said yesterday at this UN Global Compact uh, conference I was listening to that only if you have sustainable resilience in your business, you will have financial resilience. So that's just a sort of you know, uh, giving it a little bit of a, of a global view of the impact that the sector have and the opportunities that lie in addressing those. Um, I think, you know, um, Rosa was also saying that it's going, you know, the ESG impact investment is, is only increasing. It's quadrupled over the last year. All right. The, 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 the Global Impact Investing Network estimated that the market went up to 750 billion in assets. Um, and that quadrupled just between 2019 and 2020. So again, I think there's a lot of opportunities here to be looked at. I hope that sort of gives a bigger picture. Very, very good. Thank you. And, and uh, I, mean, I, th I guess the, the, the question is, is there an ROI on sustainable uh, investment? Um, clearly there's a few diff different topics that go into that. Uh, you know, you calculate your ROI on value uh, one of the things that creates value to to, to investors is is bottom line. Uh, one of the things that you know you, you need to get the bottom line uh, profits is top line. And uh, uh, so, one of the first questions, really, and sort of a global question to everybody, is is um, you know do guests and maybe Josh can can tackle this first. Do guests care more about sustainability now? than they did and will they perhaps pay a little bit more for a, for a product that is outwardly sustainable? So Josh, what, what do you think of that? So I, I, we, we believe they do care more about it um, and especially our target market, um, which our, our, our target cons, um, customer is, are those who are, you know, wish to reduce their carbon footprint um, without having to give up on luxury. Um, I believe as a company, as we, we, have, we have eight trading hotels open today. Um, we're a fairly young company. We've been around for four or five years. Um, you know, and, and our track record of performance um, at the top and bottom line has been incredibly strong. And, and you know, given the fact that nature and sustainability is paramount to everything we do from you know, initial design principles to you know, sourcing of, of the materials in, in the construction process, um, all the way through to operating standards, um, you know, to, to, you know, to, to offset some of maybe Frank's initial concerns about focusing on investment before uh, returns. We're here to reassure you that this could, it can actually be very profitable. Um, and our, you know, listen, we were founded by a private equity guy and, and through our affiliates, they have 
developed and sold and are investing in new um, hotels under our, under our flags, which demonstrates that we are able to financially deliver the results that are required for pretty high thresholds of investor returns uh, required by private equity groups. Um, and when you look at, you know, compared to our competitive um, set in the various markets we're in, we, we significantly outperform them. Um, one could say on a like for like positioning level um, on a top and bottom line. And, and, and it's just showing that consumers are willing to pay a premium for that as long as you're staying true to your roots, uh, following your, your sort of the right compass direction on that. And, and anecdotally, we have a lot of our group, uh, events managers are starting to keep track now of, of you know, corporate and, and social events where, that we're only booking at us because we are focused on the environment and sustainability. So yes, to answer your question, um, there very much is a profitable upside to uh, focusing on, on the environment sustainability. Um, you know, and it's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're testing to that. Maybe I can just add a quick comment on that, um, uh, that question of whether customers are willing to pay for it. I think there's a really amazing subsector of the industry out there that focuses on boutique hotels that kind of cater to clients, like presumably us, who go on holidays and want to um, at the same time not feel too guilty about it and uh, and stay somewhere that actually meets sustainability credentials i think there's a huge opportunity out there for hotels to actually address the really poor, especially the corporate segment right if you look at all of the statements that companies are now coming out with um, in terms of um, zero emissions uh, over the next you know decade or so um, i think there's a huge uh, opportunity for that market to capture the, that corporate demand right if you are actually able to help these companies uh, meet their goals i think that would be great and for now i think a lot of the larger operators have been maybe more more passive um, in that whole journey of ESG rather than sort of proactively driving it and therefore might have missed out on some of these opportunities. I think that's a, that's a very good point. It's not necessarily just the leisure guest that, that, that cares about these things. Uh, the, the, the environmental sustainability and governance policies account for all companies and all, especially all large companies. And they ha there are checklists when they're, I've, I've heard anecdotally as well that um, when, when they're going to book large quantities of rooms, they, 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 they can test your, your uh, as an operator, they, they, they will ask you questions that are difficult. And if, as Xenia said, if you're not measuring uh, your, your, uh, your emissions, then they may not be interested in staying with you. So I think that there, is, there are some commitments there that you, you, you may gain a little bit of revenue, as, as Josh was saying, from a, from a top line perspective, because people will spend a little bit more to stay with you, but you also may lose potential guests on the group side or on the, on the corporate side because you're not, uh, you're not checking the boxes that they need to check. Yeah, I think the RFPs, you just, you know, as you just mentioned, Adam, there's an increasing pressure. So the more companies, and not only from our sector, the more companies that are signing up to ESG, and to having you know ESG credentials and to running their companies in, in such a way, they will have objectives of having transparency within their supply chains and within their partners. So let's say a big company like IKEA, for example, when they go out and they do RFP processes in hotels, they will have quite a big chunk of their questions about sustainability. So you will not be given that contract as a hotel if you cannot answer those questions. And if you are not seen to be delivering on those fronts. So the, also the pressure, as you quite rightly said, not just from the individual traveler that Rosa addressed, there is also increasing pressure now from the corporate sector where companies, the more companies that are signing up to this, um, the more the hotels are going to have to deliver. So again, it's a, you know, on both fronts, you're going to have to be replying to that. Now, now Frank, you, you tend to invest in the building and hire a, a management company or, or lease the building to a management company to run it, run it for you. Um, and you mentioned when we spoke previously that, that the, the ESG wasn't on the top of your priority list until 20, now until 2021, where it will become a higher, higher priority. Um, but with, with what we've just heard, do you think it, it, it should be? And, 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 and what, what has been uh, the priority for you up until now? Yeah, until now, it was really all about returns. And um, 
So we were also looking so far for, for buildings which has some kind of uh, certification, pre-M or LEEDs or whatever. So, so we, are, we are co-investor, we are investing in trophy assets. So, so we are always looking for good assets in good locations and long-term good buildings. So, so certifications that was part of our investment process, but within our due diligence criteria, we didn't really have ESG criteria in there. So, so we were looking at a good building, we were looking at the capex and um, what kind of investments we have to take over the next years and what's going to be the return. So I guess this, this, this will change now because the, um, with the ratings we have for our funds, the, the ESG ratings and uh, what, what we are looking for is, um, so, so, so the German Investment Fund Association, BDI, is suggesting different models and, and we will choose ESG impact, which means that uh, you can choose a certain criteria which you want to focus on. And for us, it will be, it will be CO2 emission. And we want to reduce by a certain percentage, which is not clear how much is that going to be over our, our funds, maybe 20, 30%, it's not clear. We want to reduce carbon emission. That means that, that we have to work hard together with the tenants as well. So, so we also have to work together with hotel operators, but also with uh, uh, office tenants or, or logistic operators to, to reduce carbon emission. So, so we'll have to look at the operational side and we have to look at, at the real estate. So it's going to be a complete new, new focus for us, which, uh, which will be also very interesting for our asset management people to change really their, their focus, not only on the building, but also on the operator on the operation and the environmental issues and discussing on the um, what what a, a, a hotel client how much he would value really ecotourism you know these these ecotourism people are probably the same people then which which are investing also in our ESG funds so so on one hand they want to have a, a, a sustainable hotel but also a sustainable fund and in the end it's going to be also a valuation impact because if if we if we can't look at a hotel anymore which is not sustainable there must be also a price uh, a discount to it on the market if the large investors are not able to look at uh, uh, at uh, not non-sustainable real estate if i might just add on just another quick comment um adam on on what frank has been talking about and and what xenia had, had mentioned earlier about about it, you know, the, the myth being that it costs more to be more um, environmentally sustainable. You know, we've, we've found that, it, you know, in, in our projects that we've developed, they're, it, it's not more expensive at all. Um, it's not about how much you spend, it's about where you spend it. And it may, so it's about sourcing the right materials. It's about partnering up with the right, you know, the right partners throughout the supply chain. It may take a little bit longer, the lead time may be a little bit longer, but you're making the right decisions that are Ultimately, you know, if you know, at, at, the, at the worst, it's it's net even on on cost. But then the other, you know, the flip side on the value is that you're you're generating more value for a similar level of cost, and you're you know following the direction that, that you know the world seems to be heading in. You know, on our side, you know, we we you see reduction in in you know in energy costs through through investment in um, energy reducing um, components within a hotel operation and, and the reuse of, you know, using reusable materials, et cetera. So there's all sorts of little bits and pieces that help it reduce cost exposure, reduce energy, energy consumption, and are not really costing that much more money, if anything at all, so. I think that's definitely true for, for new developments. And actually that's something that we discuss uh, quite a lot across different asset classes in real estate. If, if you have a new development, it doesn't cost you that much more, as you said, to actually choose a sustainable option as opposed to the traditional one. When you have a standing asset, which I think um, probably, uh, Frank, you guys very often are faced with situations where you buy a standing stock in very dense locations where you're not talking about a major redevelopment. And so it's really an active choice of do I leave the thing as it is um, and run it you know, inefficiently or do I invest a significant amount of money to improve it? And then I think for now, at least on the projects I've seen, it's it's been less clear cut purely uh, on the return on that investment, whether that pays off. Although I think what makes a massive difference now is basically that, as Frankie mentioned, um, 
you basically a lot of investors won't be able to buy um, these buildings anymore if they don't meet certain criteria so for us that's a massive impact on our underwriting right we are in the business of creating product for um, for you know buyers like Frank um, that um, that want to own these assets for you know 10 15 years and so if there's a certain box uh, that we can't tick uh, in their underwriting uh, we're left at the end of our investment period without a buyer so I think that has a huge impact on uh, how important this topic will be for the industry I think that's a that's a massive opportunity in, in, in particular in the investment world we're about to perhaps get into where for the next few years, it, it may be a little bit tricky for, for new, new projects to get, get out of the ground. Um, that perhaps one of the opportunities for investors will be to, to I don't know, I don't like the word greenify, but to, to, to make hotel, uh, existing hotels investable for the long-term investors who now have these ESG policies uh, I think that's true. And also if your opportunity cost of maybe potentially closing down a couple of floors is lower because your income during that period is anyway impacted by COVID, that might create quite an interesting window there to, to do these works. Yeah. And can I add to that sort of again within the EU Green Deal? Um, so one of the targets for all the EU member states is to reach 32.5 energy efficiency in buildings. Um, and so there are incentives, financial incentives available for these energy improvements. So I think, you know, as you were just saying, Rosa, for existing properties, this is, this is the time and we've only got 10 years now. Okay, this is a pretty tight window uh, when you're thinking of a turnaround of your assets for 10, 10, 15 years, you know, you're going to have to be taking that into account. So it's a quite, it's an interesting time right now. So also potentially another incentive on, on the return on investment side, if you can get some capital or some, some grants or some funds from government to turn these things around as well as potentially a better exit because if you're underwriting uh, savings and energy costs and all sorts of other things where alternatively leaving it the same, the energy costs will go up because we have to assume that the, the, the penalty from governments, if you don't do these things, will be increased taxes uh, on, on carbon emissions, increased taxes on waste and things like, and things like that. So, so presumably there's another incentive that's going to be forced, the, the, the stick as opposed to the carrot, which will, will, which will make investors um, and hotel owners become more sustainable. So it's a good opportunity for a brand uh, such as, such as uh, One Hotels to, uh, to, to really be out there um, and, and work with investors. Um, when, when, you, when you are looking at, when you're talking to owners, I mean, I know you've started fairly recently with this new role, but you speak to owners, you've been speaking to owners for a long time. Um, how have you noticed investors and owners behaving differently, Josh, uh, in, 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 in the questions that they ask you about sustainability? Do you think there's a, a change, a sea change? I don't know if it's a sea change, but there's definitely a noticeable trend and a way um, not caring to um, being open to it and about it. And we know that's going to happen. I think, you know, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a big world and, and the industry's, you know, you know, much larger than a, you know, a, you know, massive container ship, right? It's just, it'll take a while, but it's getting there. And there are companies like ours that are trying to stand at the forefront and sort of be mission driven on this um, and try to be sort of, you know, you know a, a platform for change. Um, as I said earlier, you know, the, you know, the industry has traditionally been very wasteful, you know, single use plastics, um, you know, energy and water consumption that's unnecessary, you know, lights on, electricity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, I, I think when you're talking to the investment world, um, obviously, you know, it's all about bottom line. If the bottom line doesn't stack up and the, and the ROI is not there, then it's, it, it's, it's a harder case to make. Technology, I think technology has evolved to the point where there are material positive impacts that can be, that can be captured um, through the implementation of those to reduce costs. Um, and when you couple that with, with you know, sound operational expertise, um, and, you know, and, and, and our hotel, you know, that you start creating a, a significant value proposition that, that is slightly differentiated to where the vast majority of the dinosaur groups are still and will be, take a while to get them to change out of that that mode. Um, as a younger company, we are perhaps a bit more nimble and we can we can work. Um, you know, we can start off with a fresh clean of paper and say we have this vision. We're going to move in that direction, and this is the value it's going to create. 
And I think if you look at our hotels, I mean, our, um, you know, our, our direct bookings are reportedly 25% higher than the industry average. And that means lower cost of a business. And so that generates more flow through to the bottom line. And you add on the other operational efficiencies we have, and then you, you know, through the energy, um, you know, consumption reduction, et cetera. And you're really creating a, 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 a like I said earlier, just sound financial proposition that, that is appealing to investors. And it's, you know, I think we're still at the point where it's really important to, to, to align ourselves with like-minded groups. Um, there are some who are perhaps still a bit timid and dipping their foot in, a bit skeptical of direction people are going in and the group is going in in terms of, of sustainability. But, it, but for those who care, the evidence is there, the data is there, the performance is there, the technology is there, and it's only going to get more and more pronounced. And you know, we're going to continue to be part of this, hopefully at the forefront for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Um, Rosa, and then I'll ask the same similar question to, to Josh. What sort of systems do you, as investors, what sort of systems do you have in place to test whether the hotels or the, or the, or the operators that you might select to run your hotels are, um, you know, are uh, doing the right thing with the ESG? And, and how are you measuring it at the moment? Um, are you, are you, I, I know that there have been quite a lot of companies as this has become front of front of mind uh, that are sort of rushing towards tr trying to figure out how to do this. So how, how, how do you guys do it at the moment? And, and um, yeah. yeah, look, I think measurability is a big challenge um, of this entire topic. And Xenia and I actually have discussed this um, at length previously. Um, I think everybody has very good intentions and the main struggle at the moment, I think, is that there isn't really one um, generally agreed framework that people follow when they assess um, these different things. Um, so we try to be as consistent as we can, but given the huge variety of assets uh, that we invest in, in different asset classes, but even within hotels, you know, we invest in resort hotels um, on an island, we invest in city hotels of various size. So it's very tricky to actually find uh, criteria and, um, and KPIs that uh, are sort of consistently applied across all of these. So we do take quite a, a tailor-made approach. Um, we come up with a list for every investment committee for each investment of ESG criteria that we think are really important for the specific asset class, for this specific asset, and where we think we can actually make an impact during our whole period. And then we incorporate that into our ongoing asset management plan. And we basically, we check up on that every quarter with the operator. And I think what's important to mention here as well is that we are not the ones operating the assets. Uh, we always partner with people on the ground. So while we are always trying to put as much pressure as we can, ultimately the responsibility of executing that lies with the operating partner. So all we can do is kind of use sticks and carrots to incentivize them. Um, but they obviously need to bring the expertise, which I think uh, the industry is de definitely developing in the right direction, but we're all learning. Yeah, may I add here? Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a real challenge also for the for a existing portfolio like we have. So we are one of the larger operators, uh, not operators, investors um, across Europe. And um, and for our portfolio, if you know, if we if we want to reduce our carbon footprint by twenty or thirty percent, it's going to be a huge effort. You know, we on, we also have have to look not only at the building. We would have to really look at at the tenants. You know how what what are they doing within the building how can we reduce emission you know on the operation not only hotel but also on the offices so so um it's completely new really to the to the industry and 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 the, the real estate industry they have to really develop a, a system like rosa said you know it's 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 tricky really to measure it of course you can you have energy consumption and so on which you can measure but um but there's also waste and other things um and um, it's going to be it's going to be tricky. That's Can I just add a, something there as well? I was, I was going to say that's perhaps a, a very sort of soft pass there to Zenia to 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 to, to show off some of your your um, skill sets. Yeah, no, we've just had a little bit of a success on that front, actually, uh, Rosa. Since I spoke to you last, so we're working on a, a portfolio for a bank, um, a hotel portfolio, and the. Bank has a very high standard when it comes to sustainability. So what we've had to do is translate their sort of sustainability strategy at bank level onto their hotel portfolio. 
Um, and within the hotel portfolio, there are two or three big brands like IHG and Marriott and Radisson. And each of those have their own sustainability goals as well. So it's sort of matching up all of that. And so uh, the bank, um, their ESG um, reporting is according to GRESP which is one of the sort of, um, you know, standards that come within the, the ESG um, impact investment. And some of the hotels have a certificate. In this case, it was Green Key. And so what we've managed to do is actually speak to both of those bodies and say, and GRESP now recognizes the operational certificate, which is Green Key. So what you were just saying, Frank, is one thing is to measure your emissions. The other thing is to be able to make progress when it comes to operations and reduce on other levels, which are a little bit more the soft metrics, which some of those certifications will pick up. Um, I agree there's still a lot of um, improvement that needs to be made when it comes to um, tracking progress on the, on the softer metrics and the KPIs there. But at least what we're trying to do is also talk to those different certification bodies to say, you know, one, you have the investor and you need to have that sort of GRESP standard. But equally, you know, the operators are doing their other stuff and can you not recognize it? Otherwise, everybody's sort of going into different directions and, and, and we're doubling up on efforts that should be, that should be aligned. So that's, that's good news. I think there's more dialogue coming. There's more, you know, stakeholder conversations happening there so that it will become easier that we're all driving into the same direction because at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's what needs to happen and we've all got the same goals. Um, so that's a positive development. Great. Well, one of the, I guess we're, we're running a little bit low on time. We've got about four or five minutes left. Um, well, I guess one of the important metrics when, when we're looking at valuations of hotels and whether there is a return on investment of, of this type of, of investment, you obviously we looked at the top line, we looked at the bottom line, the costs uh, to sort of reductions and everything else, uh, and then the exit. So are there people who are going to buy the hotel off you at a, at a reasonable cap rate? So I was, I was wondering if you had any thoughts about whether um, in, in, in five years time, perhaps, uh, Rosa, your, your, probably your whole, whole period is, is maybe about four or five years. Frank, possibly a bit longer with your properties. Um, but do you think that there's a cap rate reduction on, on, uh, on hotels with, you know, with strong ESG or, you know, but better buildings with strong ESG uh, principles um, run efficiently. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I think that would, uh, maybe I would phrase it actually the other way around. I think there would be a penalty for hotels that don't meet those criteria because your investor pool, I think, would be different. So a lot of the core buyers, I think, would just fall away if certain criteria aren't met. Uh, and then you're left selling to people like us, you know, who might be, who might get comfortable uh, with the fact that they can change um, these things during their whole period or they're happy to take the risk on the construction side. Um, but I do think, yes, there, there will be um, a difference uh, in the yield that applies to, to these different assets. Any, uh, it's, 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 any, any guesses as to where, how, how wide those differences might be? Uh, this is being recorded, so I'm, I'm not going to make a guess. <laughs> I might look very stupid in two years' time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I would probably say that you know you 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 have to price that into your into your future capex. So so you have to bring that building. Then, if you want to sell it as a core building with a good price, you just need to 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 upgrade the building to a sustainable level and uh, upgrade also potentially the operation to a sustainable level. And that's probably the cost uh, you, have to, you have to take. And, uh, and that's also the discount you're, you're calculating. Yeah, and I think Frank, you actually made a good point on the, on the contracts in place, right? On the lease contracts, because for us, we don't typically buy leases, but I think there will have to be a change in even like how the structure of, of these documents works, because you guys as an investor, you have pretty limited influence on what your tenant actually does. So I think, these contracts need to reflect uh, the change in sentiment that if your operator um, or tenant doesn't actually comply with certain criteria with regards to sustainability, um, you have ways of rectifying that or, or changing them. So a balanced scorecard for, uh, for, for tenants, you have to, you have to meet the, 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 the lease coverage ratios and, and all of those things, but you've also got the covenants, but you've also got a, a covenant which relates to your sustainability and your that's a, that's a good idea, I think. Yeah, and I think it'll go the other way because the operators will also say, if you make my building smart, because often it's the operators that are carrying the costs for energy, 
um, and water. So if they go back to the owners or, um, and say, okay, fine, we will operate more sustainably, but you also need to make sure, as Frank was saying in the CapEx, that you are planning to make this building a smart building so my energy costs come down. I think that also hasn't been regulated. Just a, a, just a quick point, Adam. Um, you know, I think going somewhat on, on your previous question, it's, it's in terms of sort of capturing the appropriate metrics and measuring, measuring how an operator or an investor um, is addressing um, you know, all, all of this. Uh, you know, there are metrics to be captured, but there's a bigger holistic picture here as well. And that, that's difficult to really quantify, but when you look at it all together, it, you know, it, it gives you a much better idea of what one particular group is doing um, versus another. And you just have to have to keep an open mind on it. I mean, I think that it all starts with having a sustainability strategy and, and that'll be quantitative and qualitative. Things like employee retention to prevent you know, to, to, to you know, prevent a higher turnover and continue to have your staff espouse the values and not, you know, reduce your training costs. Um, things like, you know, investing in, you know, uh, uh, as a company, we are striving ultimately to become a carbon neutral company and have all our buildings LEED certified. And, you know, we're actively working towards that. That's quantifiable and measurable, but keeping your employees engaged and, and attracting the right type of talent, and, you know, and understanding and giving in our rewards program um, for our guests uh, gives them the opportunity to completely offset their carbon footprint from their stay with us. Whether 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 they you know the money that goes to investing in um, you know reducing you know car carbon neutral um, reduction capabilities or in protecting you know natural environment and and, and uh, you know trying trying to you know go through sort of natural natural sort of carbon reduction capabilities and protecting that. So I think there's a, there's a, there's a, as I said, there's a quantitative side to all of this. And when you look at it together, it's pretty easy to, it's pretty clear to see which groups are more serious about it than others, which are just dipping their toes in. So I think we just have to sort of keep an open mind as we go forward and, and try to understand sort of ESG principles and, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. No, I think that's, that's right, Josh. And thank, uh, th thank you for bringing up the stuff and, 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 and as well, I meant, meant, meant to do that myself. It, it's 10.42, or I guess not 10.42 because we recorded, but we've had our 40 minutes. Um, so I guess it's almost time for me to, to, to wrap up. But what, what, what I'd like to sort of conclude to say is, in speaking with all of you, um, that there is definitely a movement in, in, in this field and that the hotel industry, and, and it's, it's, uh, I've, I've come across it in, you know, in, in meetings with bankers, in meetings with lawyers, in meetings with operators and investors, and everybody is starting to feel that more. Guests are feeling it more, our staff, our teams are feeling it more, uh, that, that something needs to be done. And I think that's uh, a, a clearly a sea change in the world that we live in as well, which is, a, which is a good thing and a positive thing. I'd like to thank you all for, for, for sharing your time with us today and your thoughts uh, from the investment perspective. I think we can, we can conclude that there is a, a, a positive ROI for being sustainable. Uh, and for doing the, you know, the, making the right decisions, and it will probably in, increase as we go along versus the alternative. Um, perhaps uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a negative ROI for not doing anything. Um, and we, uh, we you know, I look forward to seeing the life, life post, post COVID-19 with the with with real sustainable vision for the future that we can, um, we can aspire towards. There seems to be a lot of work to be done and, and people like Xenia uh, are at the forefront of, of, of helping companies to become more sustainable. I, I encourage anyone watching to, to check out their YouTube channel. They've got some great YouTube videos that you can learn a little bit more about how to become sustainable and, and, and some of the jargon and some of the, tech, um, some of the things that are, are going on there. Uh, on, our, on our PKF website, we have a white paper which we wrote for MIPIM as well, which I'll happily share with the MIPIM uh, team as well. They, they can share that along. And, and uh, I'm sure you'll stay at many of Frank and Rose's hotels over the course of, uh, of, of your lives and, uh, and Josh's as well. So thank you all very much for, for your time uh, and look forward to seeing you in person at the next uh, MIPIM in Pan um, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>